Hello again. Uh, this time I want to show you how to hack Opera. I showed you uh, in a previous video how Firefox was leaking location and how to access that. Um, but this time I'm going to extermine Opera. You'll need version 12.02. Um, a new version came out recently. Um, so don't upgrade if you wanted to follow this tutorial. So the first step is um, we need to load an external domain name um, into an iframe. There's a convenient um, option here called X Domain Test. Uh, click on the X Domain Test button here, and then that loads an external domain name into an iframe. We can reference that by um, putting X in the output window and then clicking Alert Output. And then you, you'll see the um, Opera Security Error. Um, which proves that X refers to content window here. So what we need to do then is we need to leave X in the output window and then click inspect um, which is down the bottom here next to select. Um, and then we need to scroll down until we get to location. As you can see locations there. Click on location and Opera is leaking more properties than the other browsers which is interesting um, and usually indicates a bug. Um, of those properties what is particularly interesting is constructor and two string of value of. Um, for hacking Opera today we're going to be using constructor. So a constructor returns um, one property which is prototype which is cool because um, the prototype will generally show more properties. So click on prototype. As you can see, there are a lot more. And what what we think is happening here, um, well, what I think is happening here, but what you should be thinking as well is that we're accessing an external constructor property of a location, and it's leaking all these other functions. Um, so what we need to do is grab the first property, which is define getter, copy that. And now what we're going to do is um, recreate the inspection, but in JavaScript. So X is the contact window. So then we need location. Then we need constructor. Then we need prototype. And then we need define getter. So in the output window, you need X dot location dot constructor dot prototype dot define getter. Let's try and access that. So interesting, we're, we're able to access the um, function itself, which is interesting enough. But let's try the constructor. Because the constructor of a function is function, which allows you to execute code like eval. So this is interesting because um, I suspect that this is, um, well I know, that this is actually an external um, constructor from the iframe. But how do we know? It's quite a difficult task really. Um, what we can do is use the browser to let us know. So, um, the first thing we're going to try is to execute alert1. You'll notice the two um, brackets at the end um, to call uh, the constructor function. So let's try and execute that. And we get a security error from Opera. Uh, security error attempted to read protected variable alert. So um, it seems like Opera handles this, but do they? Let's try something else. Let's try alert the array constructor, for example. So what I did here, I changed the alert and uh, used a return array instead, and then clicked on the alert output. And then I'm getting a security error which says attempted to read protected variable array. So it doesn't look like um, you can execute code um, because the actual function itself is very restrictive. 
But let's try something else. Let's try and um, execute one plus one. So this external function um, returns two, which is very interesting because that's a literal value. So maybe we can only execute literal values and not actually access um, constructors like array or functions like alert. But wait, if, the ret if we can actually return a literal value, maybe we can access um, the array constructor in a different way. So instead of returning 1 plus 1, let's return an array. That also works. So, um, the constructor of an array literal is, let's try it, array. So we've just bypassed one of the restrictions that Opera set, which is cool. But what else can we do with array? Well, we can access the prototype. Oh, if I can spell it. So we can access the prototype. Let's try and access join. Let's assign um, the array prototype um, dot join to something like haha. That works. But it's hard to test how do we know it actually works. So um, what we need to do is you need to scroll down and there's a second option here called X domain JS shell. What that does is it loads a JavaScript shell from an external domain name. So let's click that. So as you can see the shell appears below um, and you can type in here. And as you can see I typed in an array literal dot join and then that returned. Um, the native join function. So let's try and execute our code again. Um, this uh, shell window has the same reference of X so we can reuse all the code that we've just done. So I'll click execute JS and then let's try array.join again. So we get haha. Now that means obviously we're transferring, um, well we're overwriting a join function from one domain to the other. So let's make um, join a function. So here, instead of returning haha, I'm returning a function and ex uh, alerting the document body in a HTML. So the last step, execute JS, and let's try that again. But this time we'll execute join. And there you go, that's how you ex-domain opera.